Um, so last year, my university was primarily on Zoom. But mm -hmm. this year, they have decided they want to do half of our courses in person. Okay. And the other half, which they call on demand, which is basically asynchronous lessons. Okay. Um, and so, of course, in person I've done, but it's different because we have masks and social distancing. So I'm very concerned about um, doing certain activities like speaking activities or group work activities, mm -hmm. still keeping them engaged, but in a safe way. So that's the first yeah. part of my question. Okay. And then asynchronous lessons I've taken as a student but I've never conducted as an instructor. So just your advice on how to make those engaging. Okay, that, okay, that's a great question. So what I'll do first of all is I will share a couple of videos with you, um, which I will find now. So in the, uh, in the UK, um, I've been organizing these uh, webinars for the Association of Language Learning referred to as TILT. So TILT is Technology and Language Teaching. And we've had a couple of um, sessions delivered recently, which will uh, particularly address what you're talking about, um, or the first part of your question. So the first one is this one, which I will share with you now in the chat. So this is um, uh, a lady called Catherine Ritz, who works in the States in a Boston University. And what she does, oh, what am I doing? Hang on. What she does is she um, teaches face-to-face -face classes and remote classes at the same time. So like a hybrid mm -hmm. context. Mm -hmm. So that video um, that I've just shared with you, she go, she, she talks about an hour um, about how she delivers content with uh, roomies and zoomies, as one could say. In other words, people in the room and people at home at the same time. Right. But, so when you say face-to-face, -face, do you mean they're all gonna be face-to-face -face, or do you mean that some will be at home and some will be in the class? Well, that's the interesting part. So uh, I teach Japanese learners and then I teach international students from other countries. So our Japanese learners, they're all here, they'll all be in person, but our international students due to issues with immigration, um, some of them will be on Zoom and some of them will be in person at the same time. Okay, so, so the second link. and Zoomies thing. Yeah, <laughs> so the second, the second one is um, one by Meredith White, who's also from the States, and she came up with the term Roomies and Zoomies, which is why I put in that one in there. It's called All the Modes a la Mod, which is a great title, I think. So she's mm -hmm. talking about different ways in which you can have uh, activities that the students can um, either do at home or in class. So, for example, in uh, Google Slides, how you can go into grid view and the, you, um, so the teacher can see all the different slides at the same time and each student can be assigned to an individual slide um, so that you can then see exactly what they're doing. Um, you can do the same thing with Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, I've got various videos I can share with you on that as well, but um, uh, nice way of dealing with that. So it doesn't matter where, where people are, as long as they have an internet connection, it's fine. And also Meredith talks about using GoFormative, which is another way you can monitor people wherever they are as well. Um, and GoFormative allows you to make sort of interactive worksheets with um, self-marking questions and um, you can put in audio and things like that as well. I'll find another one for you as well. This is amazing, this one uh, called Super Teachers in the New Normal. And that's by a lady called um, Jimena Lisitra, who's based in Madrid, and she's exactly um, in the same situation that you've just been talking about as well. Those three um, are really good ones. I'm just trying to think of other ones would be, oh, I know, hang on. Um, there's also um, Sofia Mavridi, who was the keynote at the at, uh, Cotisol, um, and she did a presentation for us as well, which I will find for you right now when she talks about hybrid learning. And that's also really good, unsurprisingly. And uh, there's also a couple of documents which I can find for you as well. Um, one of which Sophia, in fact, Sophia have already mentioned this in her keynote, but she uh, she's created this document or, or uh, resource around hybrid teaching, which is a collaboration between her and some other people. Um, let me just find it for you now. All right. And I've done I've done like whole presentations on hybrid teaching as well. But if I just give you some of these links now, let's have a look. Right. So here, for example, yeah, that's fine. Let's find uh, here we are. Right. 
So I'm now going to share with you um, some documents which were put together. This, this should also be really useful. This is by a lady called Beth Alexander, who's based in Canada. And she has created different models for different contexts that you can find yourself in, be it, uh, for example, the one I've got on my screen right now, asynchronous teacher at home. Uh, if, I, let me, let me, if I share my screen with you, I can show you what this looks like because it's really cool. Okay. Um, right, you should be able to see my screen now. Uh, if yes. I click present, okay. So as you can see here, it says asynchronous teacher at home. So this is one example of a model. So this is Beth Alexander, who works at the, the Linden School in Canada. I'm not sure which part of Canada, but anyway. And she very kindly um, sent me um, quality uh, versions of each of these images, which I've got here in Google Drive, which I've put in that link for you. And so if I just show you some of these, once they all start loading up, there we are. So you can see you've got all the different models. And it could just be useful, I think, from the point of view of being able to see how uh, these are set up. So, for example, before you came on, Michael and I were talking about flipped learning a little bit. So this is interactive flipped. So it's saying the role of the teacher, the student in class, student at home, tech and tools assessment and so on and so forth. So it might that might be a useful um, guide to help you to think through how some of these um, models can be set up. Synchronous three part lesson. Yep, and so on and so forth. So that's that. And then if I go back here and I go to the next one, right? This is the document I was talking about. So let me just click exit and I will uh, share those in the chat with you. So this is the document which Sophia has put together along with some colleagues of hers. And that is also talking about hybrid, um, hy the hybrid classroom. So that should really help. All those all those links and resources should really help, I think, if that's okay. Great. Yes, I appreciate it. Thank you. That's all right. No problem at all. My pleasure. Uh, and Sandy, was was what was the second part of the question again? Sorry, the first part was the hybrid. Uh, the second part was talking about the students when I actually see them face to face. It's not going to be the same as pre-COVID, we're going to be in masks and distance and just logistically speaking, doing activities with them. Yeah. What's that yeah. going to be like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So again, uh, if you're doing, so, so, so will you be able to, for example, move around the room or will they be able to move around the room or will everyone have to like sit at their desk and not be able to move at all? Is that how it's going to work? I, I would assume that they'd be able to move around the room. Yeah. OK, so if they're allowed to move around the room, then you can do I mean, there's lots of things you, you can do. Uh, hopefully today I'll have the opportunity of talking about um, there's a tool called Quicker, which I'm a big fan of, which is QWIQR. And it allows you to do um, things like um, translation races, dictation races, things like that, which maybe not be appropriate for, for university um, students. I don't know. But if they're allowed to move around the room, that's one thing they could do. But a set, uh, but. Uh, the main idea would be they could say be sitting at their seats and they could be using something like Google Slides or or PowerPoint, whereby they can all take part in the same activity, mm -hmm. be it in the room or at home, and they can all see each other's work at the same time. Um, and uh, you could do like we had a look at um, I think we had a look at Jamboard yesterday. I, I'm doing too many webinars at the moment. But anyway, we, Jamboard is, a, is an opportunity for everyone to be able to to be working on different frames in the same Jamboard. Um, that's another possibility. Um, so, as a, so, the main piece of advice would be to have everything in the one place. Be it. Um, so, I, can I just clarify? Are you in a Google environment or a Microsoft environment, or what uh, sort Google. of Google? Right. So, in a Google environment, so you could have. So, do you use Google Classroom? Uh, no. So, my university they have an LMS that they they've already a different one they've paid for called Moodle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, primarily, I manage my assignments through Google Drive. Right. Okay. So, um, right. So that's fine. So maybe you could consider using Google Classroom because it would mm. it would make life easier if you're if you if you're already using Google Drive. Basically, Google Classroom is like the face on Google Drive, 
And it just means that, for example, you can make copies for everybody automatically. Um, there's lots of things you can do. In fact, on that point, again, if I share this with you, which is um, another another YouTube um, video for the Tilt series. So there's a friend of mine, Samantha Broom, who is um, head of Spanish in a school in the northwest of England. And she did a fantastic webinar for us all about Google Classroom, which is here, I'll just find the link. And she also manages a Facebook group called um, uh, Google Classroom for MFL Teachers, which is fabulous. And it has about 5,000 members, I think, or something, or maybe 4,000 or something. Anyway, something like that, it's in the thousands. So that video uh, is a really good starting point for setting up Google Classroom. Um, and if you're doing it that way, because we had a question about Google Classroom yesterday, um, it means that you don't have to use Moodle. You could just use Classroom and you can share um, assignments with students. You can make copies of them automatically. It's all saved within their, with your Google Drive and their Google Drive. So it just makes mm -hmm. it easier. So it'll be, if you're using Classroom, it'll make it easier to manage all your content, basically. And then I'd also really recommend um, Moat. Have you heard of Moat, M-O-T-E? I haven't. Right, so Moat is a Chrome extension and it allows you to leave uh, audio comments uh, in Google Slides, Google Docs, and Google Classroom. So anywhere that you can leave a comment, you get a little circle that comes up with an M in it. So the, the circle's in purple and the M is in white. And you just click on that, and, you, and for free, you can record up to 30 seconds per audio recording. It's unlimited the numbers of recordings you can do. If you then uh, pay, like I think 20... Uh, 20 pounds for the year so that'd be about what 25 dollars or something for the year then you can have up to 90 seconds unlimited uh, notes or if you want multilingual transcription then you can pay i think up to about 50 pounds for the year and therefore everything can be transcribed automatically into into all the languages which are available there's also um moat to slides as part of that so you install the chrome extension then you get the moat to slides button which means that when you launch Google Slides, you click on that and you can record audio and embed it straight into the presentation, which is really nice. And they have a moat pad option as well, which is also part of the free extension. So you click on that and that's then record. In fact, let me just show you, if I just show you, it'll be easier. If I um, share my screen again on this, on uh, the Coty Sol, let's just share sound, right. Right, so it looks like this. So as you can see, there's the moat button. So if I click on here now, it does this. So testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing. Right, I've just done that. It should then give me the opportunity to play it back. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing. And then I click insert. And then what should happen is it should say creating audio. And then it should then allow me to embed it straight into my presentation. Hey, can you see it says creating audio? Mm -hmm. And there it is. And that's really simple. So that, that's you can use that as a way uh, of doing speaking practice or obviously audio feedback. Uh, if the students don't have access to, um, if they don't have the Moat Chrome extension, when you leave a comment, uh, it means that they just have to click on the link to, to listen to it on if they want to say an iPad. They don't have to have the Chrome extension, but it just makes the whole thing simpler. So if I, for example, highlight uh, some text here and I right click and I click comment, you can see that's the comment box that's come up and there's the moat extension here as well. So if I now click on that, blah, 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 blah. This is how you leave an audio comment into Google Slides, Google Docs or Google Classroom. There we are. Then, so there we are, that's the link and you click comment. So if, if the students don't have the Chrome extension installed, they just see the link here. So then you click comment, there we are. There it is. So then anybody who has access to that document can then just listen to it like that. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. This is how you leave an audio comment into Google Slides, Google Docs, or Google Classroom. Okay. And then up here, where the Chrome extension is uh, here, if I click on that, you can see at the top here, it says record a moat voice note. So if I click here, this is an example of a voice note made with using the moat Chrome extension. Right, so that's now copied that, there it is. And I can now paste this into the chat, which I can do, um, 
let's have a look. So if I click here and chat and click here and paste it in, there we are. That's my note. So you can now click on that link and you can now hear the audio. Um, so that's fantastic. And then the other thing I wanted to point out as well here, when you've got the, uh, the listening uh, loudspeaker icon, you can right click that and you can click replace image. Okay. So if you click replace image and you could click, for example, search the web or upload from your computer. If I click search the web, what I can now do is uh, put in um, Korea, for example. And these are different uh, things that have come up. So let's click on the flag and click replace. And now that image, can you see? Yes. Now, when I press uh, present, instead of having the loudspeaker, I've now got the Korean flag. So I can now click on that video like this testing testing one two three testing testing so there we are so that could be really useful in your context i yes. think um for audio feedback for presentations for practicing speaking uh and so on and so forth so i'll just undo all of those things so that we have the nice clean presentation again but you get the you get the idea um there we are so Blah, 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 blah. This is how you leave an audio comment. I'm not sure how I delete that, but um, it's all good. Right. So there we are. Yeah. So I'll stop showing my screen. Yeah. Is that, is that okay? Any, any other questions? Yeah, that that, that should give you a good starting point, I think. Yeah, um, this is fantastic. Thank you. That's all right. No problem at all. And I, I'll share my email address with you as well. If you want, have any other questions, just let me know. And, uh, but right. that's, that should be, that. that's what I've, because obviously lots of people have had the same question. That's why I've tried to identify people who um, are fantastic, who are able to give answers to those sorts of questions. And those are sort of like the best sort of answers that I've come across so far, but I'm, I'm constantly searching and exploring for other solutions. But I think having, having these tilt webinars is, is really good because it means that people can then go through and, and share um, their ideas and people can ask questions and so on and so forth. It's fantastic. The power of the internet is just brilliant. <laughs> Lovely. Cool. Okay. Any other questions before we start or as we're already sort of half, nearly half an hour in, or should I just should I, presentation? Should I just go for it? But it's lovely to see some familiar faces as well in the, uh, in the room. Right. So let me just, let's just go for it. So I will share my screen again and I will go here and I will go uh, share sound. In fact, let me just go for the full screen effect. That's probably better. And then you can, you can, you'll see everything. That's on my screen, which is good. And then I don't have to think about whether you can see things or not. So th this is um, uh, my email address here at the bottom. Um, so feel free to contact me after today. Today is the last clinic of the, the five day run. It's been an absolute pleasure to, uh, to work with everybody. My Twitter account is there at Joe Dale. I've recently surpassed 31,000 followers. So uh, if you would like to follow me and you're not already, feel free to do so. If you have any questions for me that you want me to say retweet, then that's fine as well. That's all part of the service, <laughs> as one says. And uh, let's make a start. Okay. Right. So the point of these tech clinics is to answer any questions that you, that you might have, um, which is what I've been doing all week. And the question that we have today is how can Zoom be more interactive for students? So what I've tried to do in this section is talk about different ways, a bit of like a follow on from yesterday, actually, um, how we can bring in more interaction within, uh, uh, within the um, online classroom in Zoom in particular, uh, to make it more interactive, I would really encourage you to use uh, breakout rooms, which I'm going to be talking about more uh, later on, and in different ways, you can uh, use breakout rooms, and I'm going to be sharing some ideas around breakout rooms and how they can use, be used, particularly in languages. So I'm sure you'll find that interesting, but um, I'm also going to be showing different ways in which you can boost interaction as well, which I, I'm sure, uh, Monique, you'll find particularly useful as well. OK, so this was a um, this was a, um, a tweet which uh, Ben Brown um, tweeted recently. Uh, this was actually referring to Microsoft Teams, but the idea is really simple and could be used with any um, online platform like Zoom and Google Meet and so on and so forth. So it's this idea of cold calling. So as you can see, what um, Ben has written there, who's the head of department in languages in uh, in Hertfordshire in the UK, 
Uh, ask a question, tell all the students to type their answers into the chat box, but do not press enter. Choose a student at random, uh, chosen student presses enter. Now, the way you can choose students at random is you can use what is referred to as wheel of names, which I seem to remember I talked about yesterday. Um, feel free to, to say that I didn't, but if not, I'll be doing it today. I think I did it yesterday. As I said, I'm doing too many webinars at the moment, but it's wheelofnames.com. And what wheelofnames.com allows you to do is you can put in the names of as many students as you want. You spin the name while you are uh, doing the activity and uh, whichever name comes up, that would be the person who then has, has to hit enter in order to answer the question. So in that situation, what you could do is you could split your screen unless you have two screens. But if you split your screen, it means you can see the activity while you're looking at the students' faces at the same time. So there's various ways of splitting your screen. You can use um, a Chrome extension like Dualless or um, Tab Resize or Tab Scissors and Tab Blue, like that. So as a result of doing that, it means that you can then um, have your screen split into two with the activity on one screen and then the, the, um, uh, the video, um, videos of the students on the other screen. There's also a uh, tool called Classroom Screen, which again, I think I talked about yesterday. But um, for Monique, this will be new to you. So with Classroom Screen, what that allows you to do. In fact, let me just show you. I, I know, but let me just show you quickly because it's probably easier rather than me just talking through it. So let's go to Wheel of Names. Dot com. Right. So here's an example. Let's um, start from scratch. So if I get rid of all this and I put in some names like John. Do that again. Right. So John, Paul, George, Ringo. OK, so now I can name and they can then come up like this. OK, and then one of them will, will then come up. There we are. It's Ringo. Right. So now what I can do is I can, there we are, I can now go here and I can click share and continue and continue and then I can click copy link. Okay. Having done that, I could go to classroom screen which is here, classroomscreen.com launch classroom screen Uh, then I click on media here, okay, and I click on embed. I paste in the code, which is here, and I click open website. All right, and it then appears like this. Okay, so I can then move that around. I can make that a bit bigger, whatever size that I would like. There we are. And I can move that to say here. And then I can click on the random name option, which is down here. I could put in uh, John, Paul, George, Ringo. Okay, there we are. So what's happening now is one of the names will be picked here and then whatever you put in here, which again, I put in names here, but of course I could put in sentence starters or a verb uh, for each one, whatever it might be. So I basically, the, George has now come up and I can now spin that wheel and then whichever item comes up there could be then the activity I want then George to do, if that makes sense. So I've got the, uh, the names in the wheel of names, but I've also got the names um, here. So it depends on how you want to set this up, but it's a really nice way of being able to do an activity which is randomly generated, uh, such as the cold calling I just talked about. Um, you've also got the dice activity here. So you can spin a dice. There we are. And then you could be doing any sort of dice activity as a whole class activity, which again would work would work um, if you were doing this uh, in a hybrid context, uh, because you can share the, um, the, the classroom screen here, the link here with your students if they're at home, watching at home. So there we are, that's how that works. Um, so if I go back to my presentation, which is loading up right now, and we'll carry on from there, right, so. Oh, that's the previous one. Sorry. And let's go back here. This one, that's the one we want. Right. So this is the cold calling one. So that's how that would work. Hopefully that's clear on what I'm suggesting. 
So that sort of random nature, that's really easy if you split the screen or you use um, classroom screen to do that. There we are. Okay, let's carry on. Right, Vokaroo is also really easy. Um, probably a, a lot of you know this one, but if you haven't heard of it before, I'll just demonstrate it quickly now. So if I, in fact, I've just done that now. There we are. So this is Vokaroo. So what you can do is you can do the following. This is an example of how to record audio quickly and easily to Vokaroo, which is stored on their servers for up to three months. Then after that, it's deleted, but you can always download the audio file at any time that you would like. Right, so I've just made my, re my recording. I click play. This is an example of how to record audio quickly and easily to Vokaroo, which is stored on their servers for up to three months. Then after that, it's deleted, but you can always download the audio file at any time that you would like. Okay, then I click save and share. Here, I can click copy like that, and I can then paste that link into the chat, for example, if you're, if you're using um, Zoom, so I could do that right now, in fact, or you're using Microsoft Teams, or you're using uh, Google Meet. So by doing that, you can give audio feedback. You can also click the QR code option and download the QR code like this. Okay, click save, there it is. And you can also download the file itself. Now, yesterday, I was giving a presentation uh, at a Teach Meet event, which I will quickly give you a flavor of right now, because uh, it refers to Vokaroo. And it was all around praise postcards. Now, you might, you might feel that this is um, not something you do at university level, but then why not? Um, uh, this is a presentation I gave yesterday. So let me just quickly go through what I was doing. Um, so if I show you this, right, praise postcards, the idea is that you uh, create a digital praise postcard with embedded audio, which you then send to the, the students for a good piece of work that they've done. So this is what it looks like. Um, here, I've given the, the links here, which is the uh, sharing the original template, uh, the name of student here, name of teacher here, and also I've done what's called a hard copy. So if I click on this link right now, and I share this with you, then you can have access to this. There we are, there's that one. And if I go back, then there's uh, this one. There we are. So I'm just sharing that in the chat with you so you can have a look at that. Uh, but if I go back here, uh, if I click on this link here, if I just explain sort of the, the background behind this. So um, El Peachy came up with the idea of this praise postcard and uh, Karine Longman, uh, she created a, uh, a keynote um, template whereby she's used uh, Mr. El Peachy's um, uh, digital praise postcard image and then she's made it into uh, a shareable keynote which you can then export as a, as a pdf and i said possibly cheekily i don't suppose you could make a google slides and a powerpoint version of this which she did and that's what gave me the inspiration for doing this so i'm going to what i'm going to do now is i'm going to demonstrate this live so i'm going to click on this first link and as you can see it says name of student here uh, so as you can see my name's there uh, here it says paste quicker feedback or Vokaroo QR code. I've already got my Vokaroo QR code there. So I'm going to drag that across like that. And I'm going to resize it. I can then also obviously delete that there. And I can move that to where it needs to go. And then I can then uh, click file. And I can click download. And I can download that as a PDF like this. And then I can just share, oh, I can share the PDF with the students using, oh, what am I doing? Using, um, there we are, using uh, whichever LMS you're using. So that's it. So now as a PDF, it looks like this. So that means the students can then scan the QR code and they can get the, the lovely praise um, for this. So Vokery works really nicely for that. Uh, if I just go back, and I just do undo like that. It will then go back to what it was before. There we are. And instead of my name there, I will put one, two, three dots instead. Okay, so that's another idea on how you can use uh, 
Vokaroo as a way of giving audio feedback. And obviously you can use it for speaking homeworks as well. Let's carry on if that's okay. Right, quicker conversation. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna demonstrate this live. This is another way of, of um, creating uh, audio QR codes as well as having um, a threaded conversation. So again, I think this could be very useful, Monique, in your context. Uh, along with everybody else. So I'm going to demonstrate this live. If I come out of this and I just show you live how it works. So I'm going to go to quicker. Like education. Okay, so you need an account for this. I am uh, logged in, which is great. Um, so to be very clear, so quicker, it's a free tool, which was de developed by a um, physics teacher in the southwest of England. Um, the, there are two versions of the site. There's the UK version and the EU version. So both um, versions mean that when you upload the audio, it will go onto a UK server for the UK version and an EU server for the um, EU version. So there's um, different ways you can use this. The first way I'm going to show you is this one, which is print QR print QR code stickers. So if I click uh, this, as you can see, you get this sheet of QR codes. And what you do is you then click generate stickers. That will then generate the stickers right now. And then you click download, click save. It downloads the stickers, which have now downloaded. There we are, and those are the stickers here. Now what I can do is I can zoom right in so you can see one sticker in particular which is this one which is the one on the end and now on my ipad i'm going to launch the camera like this and i'm going to scan that qr code like this okay so hopefully in a second it will allow me to there we are so i tap on the notification I need to be logged in on my second device, which I am. And now I can now um, see a blue circle with a white microphone in it. So I click on that. I have to then sign in, which I will do right now in a second. Once it's, uh, it's ready, there we are. Oh, two seconds, there we are, right, sign in. Right, so now I can record my audio. So I tap record, give permission for the microphone to be accessed and away we go, here we go. Okay. Okay, this is an example of an individual audio QR code, which can be used for audio feedback for a particular piece of work. I could put it into the student's exercise book or make, maybe make a wall display, or I could post it onto Google Classroom uh, or into a Google Doc, for example. Right, so I've just done that. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, it says view your quicker. And there it is, I've done it. Okay, so now um, all I have to do, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got the, the audio player there. And that means as a result of that, if anyone were to uh, take a picture, uh, sorry, not take a picture, uh, scan this QR code, it will then play the audio. So if I press play now, Okay, this is an example you can of hear an it. individual audio QR code, which can be used for audio feedback for a particular piece of work. I could put it into the student's exercise book or make, maybe make a wall display, or I could post it onto Google Classroom uh, or into a Google Doc, for example. There we are. So like with Vokaroo, we could then take that QR code and I could then paste it. In fact, let me show you how to do this. I could use the print screen button which um, launches uh, Snip and Sketch. So if I press print screen, make my little, in fact, let me do that again. If I do Snip and Sketch again, oh, right, let's do that again. Snip and Sketch, like that. I can then go back to my uh, Praise Postcard and I can then paste it in there. There it is, and I just have to make it the right size and so on and so forth, as I showed you before. Okay, right, let's go back to uh, uh, where I just was, which is uh, here, not there, hang on, let's go back. So 
to that. All right, just lost the, hang on, hang on. Got too many things open. Let's close some of these tabs. There we are. Right, so that's what we, what I was just on. And that was my quicker uh, PDF. So that's how you do that one. But then the quicker conversations, hopefully that's clear on how to make an individual QR code. And then what you would do is you'd print off that sheet, you'd cut them up and you'd put them in exercise books. Now, if you want to do the other conversational type, uh, what you do is you create, create, create instant feedback. Okay, that, that's the blue button I was just talking about. So if I show you on the screen, actually, you might find it easier to understand how it works. If I click here and I record here, blah, 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 blah. This is an example of an individual audio QR code. Click stop. Okay, you can add a photo, you can add text, you can add a web link as well. But if you just click view, you're quicker. There it is. That's what I was just showing you. And I can just uh, click copy. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened then. Let me just uh, share my screen again. So if I go here, share sound. Right, so you should be able to see this. So if I now copy that link and I put it in the chat for you, which is here, you can you can listen to that audio recording. Okay. Uh, I've also got here uh, what's called the QR code extension. So if I click on that, that's another way of accessing um, the link through a QR code. So whichever web page you're on, you just click on that and away you go. If you want uh, an example of this, let me just um, go to here and just go to um, Chrome Web Store like this and show you how you can find this. So it's called the QR code extension. Okay, and then I can share the link with you in the chat. And it's this one. This is the one I use. There's lots of other ones, but that's the one I, that I use for this sort of activity. And then let's go back here. And that's it. So that's how you make it, again, an individual one. But if we go back, let's go back to here. If I go to create instant feedback, you can create a conversation. So this is the one I'm going to ask everyone to take part in this in a second. So if I click here, start a quicker conversation. This is where you can put in a title or a tag, which helps you to organize your uh, conversations, your links. This is the uh, audio button. So I'm just going to click record. Blah, 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 blah. This is an example of a quicker conversation. So I could be recording the first line of a dialogue, or I could be giving some instructions in the target language, or I could be um, giving some audio feedback, maybe, or starting a conversational thread with a group of students, or I could give the link to students in a breakout room and they could be recording little summaries of what they've been talking about, for example. Right, I've just clicked stop. It's uploaded that audio. I can listen back to it like this. I can delete it. I can also upload audio, which I've edited in, say, Audacity, and so on and so forth. I could add a photo in as a picture prompt. I could add some text, which could be instructions. I could put in a web link I want them to have a look at. This I particularly like, so it says choose allowed response type. So if I untick all of these, so that all that should appear on their screen is the microphone, um, which makes it easier for them to record. And uh, you've also got the option to moderate your conversation, which is absolutely fantastic, particularly at secondary school level, um, but why not university level as well? So here it says start your quicker conversation. So if I click on that, then there's my audio. If I now share the link with you in the chat, that would be fabulous. And it means you can then click on that and you'll be able to record an answer for me. So if I show you how this works, if I tap on the uh, camera option again on my iPad and I click on the QR code extension I just referred to, as you can see, I can then quickly just scan that QR code. It brings up the presentation, it brings up the link, I mean, I press on the blue circle and I can record my answer like this. Blah, 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 blah. This is part two of my conversation, or it could be me as the teacher giving audio feedback about someone's work, or 
It could be uh, maybe giving um, a, a short presentation. Very, very flexible use of um, the technology here, I think. Right, so I've just done that. There it is, and it should now, as if by magic, through the power of the internet, appear on my screen. There it is, you can hear it back now. Blah, 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 blah. This is part two of my conversation. Okay, so what I would love now, while I'm finishing off my coffee, is if somebody could record a response using the link I've just shared in the chat. So it appears as if by magic on my screen, all the way from Korea or from Japan. Three. Right. So I, as you can see, it says approve and delete. So if, if this message was wholly inappropriate, I could click delete. But let's, not, let's have a listen to it first. Hello, this is my response magically from Japan. Amazing. Thank you so much for that, Monique. That's great. I will approve that because that's wonderful. Um, the audio for the um, for quicker is stored on their servers for up to three months. If you want to keep it for longer than that, you then have to pay, uh, I think it's like uh, £1.50 or something, £2 to, um, uh, to, to keep that um, uh, per month. But um, what you can do as well, you can just download it. So if I wanted to keep your uh, audio file, I can just right click and click Save Audio As, and that will allow me to save that as a WAV file. Let's have a listen to the second one. E. Thank you very much for this great tech clinic. I'm learning a lot. And I hope I will be able to use it in my classroom. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you ever so much, Daniela. That's great. So I then click approve and so on and so forth. So you get the idea. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for your contributions. Now at the bottom here, you've got the padlock. So if I click on that, it says lock conversation. So it means I can now click on lock conversation. And it means that nobody else can then um, post audio to that link. So that's really, really useful, I think. So that's good, I think, for uh, dialogue practice, for feedback, uh, for presentations, for summaries in breakout rooms, and so on and so forth. But I'm going to share some more ideas with you um, in a moment on this slide. There we are. Let's just close that one. There we are. And click present. So on this... Um, slide here. I've actually done a tutorial for you, but I've just demonstrated it live. Is there any way the students can leave their name? Yeah, good question, Daniela. Right. So if you want the students to leave their name, then you would not um, disable the, uh, the text option when you are sharing the link with them. So they can then leave their name that way. Or you could ask them to say their name at the beginning. So there are some teachers who want it to be completely anonymous. And there are other teachers who want um, uh, every student to be identified. So uh, by default, you're not asked uh, to create an account if you're a student, but you could identify yourself by saying your name at the beginning of the recording, for example. Uh, yeah, OK. Um, now, Mari, I see that you're saying that you're lost again. Which bit are you lost with? Can I, can I go over something again? Which bits are you not sure about? Uh, like, uh, so I click the link and then everybody record it there and they send it to yeah. you or yeah. just. <laughs> yeah. So, so, it, so, you, so what happens was you click the link and then you should hmm. have, you should have had a microphone icon appearing on your screen. Is that right? Uh, Did you, I, I mean, I've locked the conversation now, so you won't be able to reply to it, but, uh, what should happen is you should have, um, the microphone link that appeared on your screen when you clicked on the link and then you just click uh, record and then that will allow you to record your message what what happened when you clicked on the link so is the the one that you put https uh, uk dot quicker is, yeah is that the that's one right okay. yeah so but I, i've you won't be able to record now because i've locked the conversation but if okay. you click on that mm. what would have happened initially was that you saw the microphone icon did did you click on that link yeah but i don't see it Right. What happens when you click on the link? Mm. 
I tell you what, well, let's do it again oh, okay, quickly. Yeah, I, I see it now. You yeah. see it now, yeah? So what you would do is you'd record your message and it would then go to the to the thread so that then everybody who has access to that link can then hear the audio. Is that okay? Okay, so instead of like, I was thinking of uh, using Flipgrid, but maybe- Yeah, so it's similar. It's similar to Flipgrid. Okay. Yeah, then but we, co we, covered Fli we covered Flipgrid, I think on Monday, didn't we? So it's a similar idea to Flipgrid. But with Flipgrid, um, you've also got the the video option. Yeah, yeah. You've also got the you've got you've also got the mic only option in Flipgrid, which is similar. Yeah. But I think if you just want to focus on the audio, yeah, uh, quicker is another is another option for sure. And then we don't have to create any like particular account for this. No, that's right. You okay. just need the link. That's right. It's really super simple. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Right, let's carry on. Okay, right. So here's some examples of how language teachers are using quicker. So top left, you've got Kareen Longman, who I mentioned already um, when I was talking about praise postcards. So she's saying here, use quicker feedback to record my voice on a QR code, made a gap filled text on pages to so the equivalent of uh, Word or Google Docs uh, for Microsoft or for Google. Uh, by speaking to my iPad and then blanked words out with my Apple Pencil. My students practice their listening, grammar and thinking skills all in one go, which is fantastic. Uh, so the right of that, you've got Invercad MFL, which is um, run by a lady called Sarah Bell, who's the head of languages there. That's Inverclyde uh, Academy near Glasgow. Uh, have been exploring different ways of giving feedback when people submit photos of work, no tablet or magic pen. Before I pasted into Word, then commented, then today I remember quicker feedback. I can live mark and send a unique link to each pupil, which is fabulous, I think. Um, going back to what I was saying earlier to you, Monique, about using quicker in the classroom, this is um, Turnbull MFL, which is again a school in Scotland, uh, saying that they're using quicker feedback to do um, QR code dictation and translation races. Um, clearly, you'd have to have social distancing. You wouldn't be able to just, you know, be getting too close, even though in those pictures they are, the students are next to each other. But anyway, um, that's another option that you could think about with a face-to-face -face classroom. Claire Wilson, bottom left there, um, who uh, is saying, enjoyed using Quicker for a speaking homework. Nice to hear some students speaking German, given the current limitations in the classroom. Miss Burke saying, I love being able to continue doing speaking practice. Thanks to Quicker. I particularly like the emphatic hola senorita at the start of each recording. And Vincent Everett, who is the head of languages in um, um, Durham, which is near Norwich in um, Suffolk. I've used it with year 12. So year 12 will be the equivalent of um, uh, sort of 17 year olds um, uh, learning Spanish in this case. I've used it with year 12 Spanish for voice to voice dictation. They listen and repeat each time until they can do the whole text or summarize it or answer a question. Simple, spontaneous responses, not a presentation, just like in the classroom. So I think that quicker um, replicates the sorts of things that you can do in the classroom, but you can use it in a remote teaching context or a hybrid teaching context, which is really, really nice. Uh, so there we are. Right. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, here's another idea from Vincent. Um, this is more creative. So he did a tilt webinar for us around creativity in language learning. And he came up with the idea of doing a, um, a street view mystery using Google Street View in a particular place, a town called Vesoul in France. But of course, you could replicate the same idea and use it in any, um, in any context. So what he has done, he's produced a pack, a resource pack with everything there for free, which you can access. I'm just going to give you a quick flavor of how this works. If I click on exit, I'm just going to play you a little bit of the uh, of the video, which is here. So I'll just move it forward a little bit. There we are. There we are. Here we are. So just going to right. Go. Um, so when you right. arrive, so what he's done here is he's got this uh, Google Street View image. He spits his screen in the ways that I've talked about already, and here is the resource pack, which you can download from the link in my slideshow. Um, and what he's done is he's created this um, text clue here, but he's also created these QR codes. So what he did was he created a quicker conversation link and he put it out as part of the MFL Twitterati, which I've mentioned many times during this week, but Moni, this will be new to you. So hashtag MFL Twitterati, which is a group of language teachers, language consultants like myself, and language associations, particularly from the UK and from Ireland. 
And if you do a search of that hashtag um, while having a cup of coffee or a beverage of your choice uh, for, say, 10 minutes, you will find real gems um, every single time that you do that, particularly if you put in a keyword such as MFL Twitterati plus um, Quicker, for example, or MFL Twitterati plus Flipgrid. Uh, so you'll find not only ideas, but you'll also find the people who are sharing those ideas who you can then connect with and ask them um, questions around how they're using a particular tool or around whatever it might be, speaking or listening or grammar or what have you. So what um, Vincent did was he shared the link uh, on Twitter and he asked people who were native speakers to record uh, little bits of audio as if they were an old man or an old woman or a young girl or a young boy or what have you. And then he took those audio recordings and those QR codes and he put them into his pack, which just gives an, an extra an element. Um, so uh, the students then can scan the QR code, listen to the clue in the target language and solve it by uh, going through it. So I'm just going to play some of this video to give you a flavour of how it works. In town, you find yourself here. And your first person to talk to is an homme assez vieux qui porte un pantalon gris, une chemise bleue, il a les cheveux gris. Um, and then you have this conversation with him. And there he is. He, you can click here to bring up the sound, which I've got here. Um, either that or scan on your phone, this QR code will bring up the audio. So if you click here, you'll hear me basically, or someone else, other contributors saying this. The questions underneath are very much there to help you understand. So what is his name? Je suis Henri. There you are. What is behind you? Regardez derrière vous, il y a un pot de fleurs énorme. Okay, so on the one on, on YouTube, I didn't spoil it for you. I didn't turn around and see the big, the big pot of flowers. But when you do this in class, I know from the, the previous Street View Mysteries, there's um, a gasp out loud moment. Sometimes pupils even scream when you turn around and you suddenly see something like an enormous pot of flowers for no apparent reason just sitting there. Okay, so there are some, there are some strange things going on in this town. There we are. So that's just giving you a little flavour of how it works. But I would really encourage you to have a look at this, even if you don't teach um, French. If you have a look at what um, Vincent has done there, you could obviously just replicate the same idea uh, into uh, into you know into a context, a town in Japan or in Korea or what have you. Um, just great stuff, I think. And I love the way that the audio um, brings um, the, uh, the 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 mystery to life, as it were. And uh, an example of the collaboration that happens on a daily basis with the MFL Twitterati as well. Okay, so ah, uh, we are perfect. Wheel of names. I am talking about that today. That's good. Too many sessions. Anyway, right. So Wheel of Names, I'm going to go through right now. So um, it's a random name picker. We can use it in other ways as well. So this is the example which I shared with you quickly earlier. So if I spin the wheel, a random name will be picked. So it's going to be Ringo. There we are. OK. So Ringo's name has appeared, which means I could then say to Ringo, right, Ringo, I'd like you to answer my question or whatever it might be. So that's a random name picker. If I click on uh, here, create your own. OK, this is what it looks like. And all you have to do here is you just delete the content there. And then you can just write in your own items and it can make as many as you want, basically. It's, it's basically unlimited. I think the maximum is about 200 or something. Ridiculous. You can also add in an image, which is really cool. So if I go to a new slide here, a new um, tab, and I go for auto.com, and I get rid of that, I click start over, I only choose the square one, and I choose black. And let's imagine I wanted to draw a picture of a cat. Now, I know that looks like a, like a bat, but never mind. It's not very easy to draw a cat with a mouse. No pun included. Uh, there we are. And at the top here, you can see what's happening. Using artificial intelligence, uh, Google, which who uh, creates uh, AutoDraw, is trying to work out what this is. And it, it thinks it might be a leaf. It might be um, a cat, a few. It might be a rabbit. It might be a crown, apparently. It might be, I think that's supposed to be a helter skelter and so on and so forth. So, of course, it's supposed to be a cat. So, on here, suddenly it becomes a lovely cat instead. So, now what I can do is I can click on the select tool. I can make that um, as big or as small as I want. 
like that. I can also click on the um, fill tool here and I can choose the color like this and I can click here and make it into a yellow cat and so on and so forth. I could also use this as a way of a tableau of um, or collection of different images all in the one um, image. That's another idea you can do. Now to download that, I click on the three lines here and I click download. I click save. There we are. I now go back to Wheel of Names and I click on add image. Uh, I then choose my cat, which is here, and I click open. There it is. So now when I spin, I could have just images and then whichever one comes up will be the one that I then do the activity with. Instead of um, uh, names there, you could put, say, for example, um, uh, sentence starters like in the future, I will, or last weekend, I, and so on and so forth. If you click on the customize option, which is here, you can get rid of the sound. You get, a, which is quite annoying. You've got all these different sounds here that you can have, but I normally just click no sound. You can choose how quickly it spins. You can see the maximum number of names. Wow, it's 500 there. So you'd even have a thousand names if you really wanted to. Wow, that's incredible. After spin, Again, you can get rid of the sound if you don't want to have that. You can also get rid of the confetti as well if you don't want that to appear and so on and so forth. Uh, so by clicking on the share option, I click continue and continue just as I showed you before with um, classroom screen. I click copy link. I can then share that with you in the chat like that. Uh, but I can also save the wheels if I have a Google account. So if I have a Google account, I click save. I then have to log in and then all my wheels are saved all in my account, which is something you could do. So with all your classes, for example, you could create um, a name picker for all your classes and then bring them up whenever you need to really, really simply. So if you didn't want to have an account, then you can just bookmark those links. But if you do have an account, it's all stay, it's all saved within your account. Um, so there, that's how that works. And then you've also got the um, emoji keyboard, which I've got here, so, uh, where is it? Yeah, here I've got the emoji keyboard. So let's imagine um, I wanted to do a quick search. So I could, if I wanted to talk about um, swimming, I could put in swimming like that. And then what should happen is, hang on, what am I doing? Hang on. Uh, just reminding myself how I search. Hang on, let's have a look at. Maybe you can't, maybe you have to just click on the ones that are here. So let's imagine if I click on, say, objects, and I click this one, the telephone one, I copied that like that. And then I want to have um, on the DVD one, and I want to have. Uh, this one, move your camera, right. So then I click copy and I just paste that into here. And now you can see I've got those three items there. So in other words, when I spin the wheel, if that were to come up, I could then ask the students to then come up with a sentence, including something about watching a DVD, making a film and talking to my friends on the phone. So if I go back to here, let's give you a flavor of how that works. So the first one is the name picker. The second one is using what's called the emoji keyboard, and I put a link to the bottom here. The next one is auto draw, which I've demonstrated live, and you can have multiple wheels next to each other if you wanted to. And the last one is using Bitmojis as a way of getting the students to choose um, an activity that they could then do. So that's another idea that you can then incorporate as well. Um, you've got the links to all these examples here on this page, so you're good to go. And let's go through and look at some other ideas around Wheel of Names. So this again from Karen Longman. So she has split her screen uh, in Chrome and I've given you some ideas on how you can do that already. Um, another idea actually for splitting your screen is those key. And you then use the arrow key. So you do the right arrow key and that will also allow you to um, split your, your windows so that you can then drag them around and get them to fit the way that you would like. So as you can see here, Karine has written, I finally got around to trying Wheel of Names for verbs, tenses, making sentences, you name it, it does it. 
Uh, Jane Bassnett, who I mentioned many times during this week, is saying that she's using Wheel of Names um, in conjunction with her uh, class notebook. And as you can see, she's pasted in her link there. And you can also, as I've demonstrated already, use it with the con in the context of using classroom screen. Um, OK, so that's Wheel of Names. So that's, again, I think a really nice way in which you can um, randomly uh, choose uh, a person or a sentence starter or an image as a way of prompting speaking and writing. So now what I'm going to do to answer the question around um, interaction within Zoom in particular is talk about breakout rooms. So in this example, this is a, um, a Spanish teacher, I think, from the States, Samara Spielberg. I've never met her face to face, but she um, is very active on Twitter. And she uh, wanted to replicate how to do running dictation, but but to do it um, to do it virtually. So as you can see, she's written competition is fierce today with virtual running dictation, and you better believe I've been doing high knees as they switch in and out of main room and breakout rooms. Love hearing them read out loud and watching them dictate the story uh, draw in real time. So the idea, as you can see, is you uh, put the students into breakout rooms. One student uh, per group then comes to the main room and tries to remember some of the content from a, a text which you're displaying there as the teacher, goes back to the uh, breakout room and then passes on that message to the, uh, the students who then try to recreate that, uh, that text. So then the next person will then come to the main room and so on and so forth. And of course, you have to ban screenshots, otherwise it makes it pointless. Um, but uh, that's how that works. Um, hopefully that's nice and clear with everyone. And you've got the links at the bottom there to ideas on how you can do this and how you, t how you can put it together. But of course, if you get stuck, you can always contact Samara personally. This is another um, way in which you can use breakout rooms. This has been shared by Neil Anderson. If I just click on the link here, I can give you a flavor of what this is all about. This is when you're essentially assigning different roles to different people for speaking in breakout rooms. So you've got, for example, let's have a look. Uh, okay, it's asking me to log in. <laughs> so it's still, okay. It's the whole document. You have to log in. Uh, you have to register and log in, but it's still free to access. So he goes through some, uh, I think that's that's. I think that's changed actually. I'm sure that was just freely available, but anyway. Um, yeah, you can have a look at that and see how that he's uh, suggesting that you can use that for speaking activities. Uh, the next one, this is uh, Phil Longwell, who I know personally through um, IATEFL, um, and uh, he did a presentation for the uh, Balip uh, Telsig conference back in around breakout rooms, and um, he's uh, he's a big fan of EdTech as well, and he uses it all the time for. Uh, teaching teachers and how to use educational technologies. So I would really encourage you to have a look at that um, webinar recording around using breakout rooms effectively. He has a lot of experience in this area. So uh, that's a great one to have a look at. Uh, Russell Stannard, who I've mentioned uh, before, who I'm sure you all know. Uh, if you don't know, he's, um, he's amazing. He's like an educational technology uh, consultant uh, uh, who's prolific on using uh, videos to demonstrate how to use different web tools and apps and so on and so forth. And his um, website is uh, teacher training videos, and he's prolific on YouTube as well. Uh, thousands and thousands of people watch each of, his, of the videos that he makes. And here are four videos uh, all around uh, different ideas on using breakout rooms. So again, in the context of the question that you, I've been asked, um, that should be invaluable watching all those different videos. Um, so he's, he's dealing with questions such as Zoom common problems with breakout rooms, Zoom how to share content when students are in breakout rooms, um, Zoom complete training in breakout rooms, and Zoom maximize use of the breakout room. So yeah, there's something for everyone there. That's wonderful. Okay, right. Another idea, which is particularly good um, for use uh, in conjunction with Google Slides is this video. Um, this is by a guy called Greg Kulowick, who's from the States. Uh, he's not a languages person. He's a former history teacher, but he's put this together. I think if it's okay, I might just, uh, actually we haven't got really enough time, to, but let me just give you a flavor of how this works. The whole, the whole video is 
okay, it's eight minutes long, so it's too long to watch the whole thing. Utilizing, but just, I'll just play you like a minute or so, just to give you a flavor of what he's trying to do here. But essentially, going back to what I was saying earlier about um, putting Google Slides into Grid View, that's great. But then, what do you do if you don't want um, one group of students looking at everyone else's work in another group? So by doing what he's suggesting here, you can get around that, which is essentially to make it like a master version. And in that master version uh, that the teacher sees, you then add the individual presentations from other groups um, in breakout rooms, as it were, that are then working together. So let me give you a quick flavor of this right now. Breakout rooms, whether it be in Google Meet or Zoom, is a really powerful way and a helpful tool to run your online class or your online experience. However, creating digital workspaces for those groups can be challenging and problematic. Oftentimes, it's a really helpful strategy to make one set of Google Slides where group one might be manipulating slide one, group two is working on slide two. And that's really helpful. But in that setup, each group can see the other group's work and you might want to have a different scenario. So I made a video a while back on how you can use Google Slides to create independent workspaces for each group. And those independent workspaces are only viewable by the group that has access, but then you can have a teacher view that allows you to view all of those workspaces in one unified teacher environment. So I wanted to make an update to this video because I think I can demonstrate it a little bit faster, a little more efficiently, and there's a helpful update that I didn't add in the first video that lets you see all the changes that have taken place in one unified view in your teacher slide deck. Okay, so I won't go through the whole thing now obviously because it's eight minutes long, but I'd really encourage you to have a look at that. It's fantastic. And his YouTube channel in general is brilliant on um, really, really up to date and cool ways in which you can use educational technologies. So that you should find that really useful, I think. Utilizing okay. breakout. Another idea um, that you can do in um, uh, for Roomies and Zoomies is this idea, which is live writing. So if I just click on the link here, this was written a few years ago now uh, by a lady called Kaylee Merrick, who um, is now um, in the senior, la uh, senior management team, but at the time was head of languages in her school in Sheffield. And as you can see, this was written three years ago, um, which is obviously a lifetime in education technology terms. Um, so she's using Google Docs. What she does is as you can see here, she uh, has created a table uh, in the first column of the table. She's got the students' names. She then has got a response. So she asks the question, as you can see here, this is the based on uh, like a, an exam type of rubric that you would get. So you can see that she's written about 90 words in French, uh, replied to each aspect of the question. So they have to talk about their favorite pastimes their uh, relationships with their family, a recent activity with a friend, and your projects. I've just realized that um, I was kicked out of Zoom. Can you just let, right, okay. Can you hear me still? I can hear you, yes. Yeah, no problem. Um, Are you back, Joe? You just... Sorry, you... Yeah, yeah, it's all good. I don't know what happened then. I was just kicked out, I think. Can, um, which, which bit did I just finish up? Was I talking about live writing? Yes, you were talking about live writing. Okay, phew, that's all right. I, haven't, I don't think we've lost anything then, that's good. Okay, I'm not sure why, why that happened, but anyway, let me show you that again then. So if I go back to where I was. Uh, so was was this the place that you were seeing before? Yeah, okay. Right, so um, as I was saying, if you had Moat uh, installed that I demonstrated earlier, you could have a, another column on the right-hand side here, which you could also use for audio feedback. Um, there we are, Michael, go to the machine. Okay, so that's how that works. And I'm sharing the blog post with you, but I'm also, I want to give you a flavor of how this works here. So what I've done is I've actually created a Google Doc as an example. 
Okay, so as you can see here, this is an example of one that I did earlier. So I could, for example, um, give you access to this right now. If I click share, and anyone with the link can edit. So if I click copy link and I paste it in the chat for you, like this, and I can now uh, delete the content here. So what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all these responses here. And if you want to put in your name in one of these um, on the left hand side, so delete one of the names which is here. I'm just going to clear this for you right now. And then, oh, there we are. And then you will be able to write in maybe what you did last weekend. You can make it up. I won't be checking. If I delete all, can I do that? Oh, I can't. It's even easier. There we are. So there we are. So if you write in some of your things, and then here, for I can obviously write um, what I want, but I could also, just to demonstrate, I can put written feedback here. And then I can click here and click insert column to the right. There we are. And I can add this now. And then I could give audio feedback like that. And then I could then use moat here. Or oh, there's two options. I could either do this. I could click here and click. Here's an example of some audio feedback, which I've pasted in from moat like that. Okay, I could do that. Or whenever someone here, for example, I could right click that and click comment. And I could record some audio here. Interesting. Cotiso, that sounds like a fun conference. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Okay, I can give some feedback, click comment. And that's another way of doing that. So, but the suggestion is that the, uh, the students based on the rubric that, that I've given them um, above, they write their answers, you then give them written feedback, they then update their um, response as a result of the written feedback, but why not give them some audio feedback as well in the two ways I've described. Awesome, thank you ever so much, everyone, that's lovely. Hopefully that's nice and clear on how that would work. Okay, so this is another idea, um, which is working in a, in a PowerPoint or an uh, Office 365 environment, because obviously, not everyone uses Google. Um, so here, if I just uh, show you what's happening here, that's just, yeah. So here, what's happening is uh, a teacher has created a PowerPoint and they've shared it with the whole class. Uh, they've created the same slide for each student. They've just named each one. And the idea is that each student can then access their individual slide and can work on it individually. And you can see here, that there's a little um, icon next to each slide, which shows, for example, MW. So that would be the name of the student who was taking part in that particular on that particular slide. So that's how you can see uh, who is working on which slide. So if there are two icons next to each other, you know that one student is helping another student, which is not the idea. The idea is that they're working individually. So that's an image from uh, Miss West MFL. But if I go to the next slide you can see that there are um, instructions on how to do this so this is uh, created by joe pickering who's pixie pixie jojo on twitter so she's created a video um, saying how to set this up and then likewise you've got uh, jane bassnet who uh, i've mentioned a few times and she's done a little loom video describing how this works as well so here you can see you put the name in of the child uh, this is the box in which they write their answer and you've got the questions here and the tips here. So a little bit like live writing actually, but just in a sort of a, a Google, uh, sorry, a PowerPoint um, context, but you could do the same context, the same idea, sorry, in a Google slides context in grid view um, using the, the tips um, that Greg shared with us earlier. So there's that one there. And just to finish off with, with a few minutes to go, uh, if you don't know about Nearpod, I'd really encourage you to have a look at this as well. I did a session recently for the American International School of Budapest, as you do. So the whole um, the whole uh, just um, language teachers, and um, I went through and showed them how to use Nearpod. Um, they had done a survey on which uh, tool they wanted to know about um, 
for their remote teaching, hybrid teaching repertoire. And the most popular one was Nearpod, um, which is similar to Pear Deck. I don't know if you know Pear Deck, but I personally prefer Nearpod. And so as I normally do, and I did a search for different videos, these are all the ones that I came um, across and I've watched all of them. I then designed the presentation around how to show the best um, of how to use Nearpod. Nearpod uh, works as a Google Slides add-on. So within Google Slides, you just um, launch the add-on and then you can then add interactive elements into your presentation, things such as Draw It, which allows you to, uh, uh, in real time, all the, all the students can then draw uh, onto, the, onto their own screen and then it appears as like a grid view on the teacher screen. You can add in open-ended questions, which have audio questions and audio answers, which is for languages, I think is absolutely brilliant. Um, you've got a, a Padlet type activity, which is called a Collaborate Board, um, really nice, uh, which allows you to add text and images and so on and so forth. So um, I'd really encourage you to search on YouTube for Nearpod and you'll come across all these videos. Um, here's some uh, screenshots of different teachers um, who I found on Twitter talking about Nearpod. So you can see here, Nearpod has saved virtual teaching because after our Google Classroom meets, students can review the presented material at their own pace as many times as they need. So it can be used in a hybrid context, in a remote context, in an asynchronous context, lots and lots of different ways. Uh, Miss Abbott saying, love how interactive Nearpod can make a lesson for all of my students, regardless of their age. Uh, the Collaborate feature, which I talked about a moment ago, which is a bit like Padlet. Collaborate is starting anonymous off-the-cuff responses and reaction and allow kids to put their thoughts somewhere that is low stakes for others to think on as well, which is just lovely as well. Let's carry on. Uh, Brittany saying, Nearpod has, beca has become a place for me to put everything in the lesson. No need for seven links posted to my LMS. So when, early on in the week, I was talking about sort of top tips for um, remote teaching shared by the MFL Twitter art, and that's something that they said have everything in the one place, like a Google Doc or a Google Slides presentation or a uh, or class notebook or whatever you're using, um, is really helpful for the students. Uh, as you can see here, it says Nearpod is a lifesaver for teachers like me who are teaching both in-person and distance learning simultaneously. Going back to Monique, uh, our discussion earlier, I love the engaging lessons and my kiddos love learning games like Time to Climb. That seems to be going down really well with all the tweets I've seen about that as well. Um, uh, having used their uh, Nearpod for self-paced learning experiences for my students, I can see their engagement and they can work at their own pace, which is something that um, is, is a great affordance, I think, of technology in general. Right, here are some Nearpod top takeaways. Um, as you can see, it's saying things like Nearpod can be used for students face-to-face -face or remote, remotely simultaneously in a hybrid context. Teacher has access to an extensive library where they can copy presentation into their own account and so on and so forth. So it's really, really nice, I think, Nearpod. You can... Uh, have up to, I think it's 50 megabytes in your sort of um, storage for the free account. So it means you can make up to, say, about two or three presentations. If you want more than that, you then have to pay. But you can always reuse presentations and still, still keep within your allowance. Um, everything is saved on nearpod.com. So you can then, once you've created your presentation using the Google Slides add-on, you then open up on Nearpod and then you give the code to the students. They then have what's on your screen on their screen, and then you can then run it either synchronously or asynchronously, um, which is really, really cool. Okay. And there we are. Here's the first, we've come to the end of the final thing. I've called this link um, Feb 20, uh, Feb 22, but in fact, it's it's actually the whole, uh, or oh, it's the whole of the presentation today, actually, to be fair, that should actually be. In fact, while I'm here, why, why don't I just show you how I can do this? Let me sh show you uh, live. So let me, change that and if i go back to the top like this there we are there we are and then if i click share and click copy and then go to here and go to is.gd and paste it in there and then go here and then just make sure I've got the right link. So let's have a look if I go back to this one and go here. Just so I've definitely got it for you. And it's the same format. So let's go to this one, for example. So this is one that I did on the 24th. And if I go down to the last slide, I can make sure that you've got it. So I think it's useful for me to show you this process.
because this is this is useful for any uh where, any way of sharing a short url there we are so that's the shortcut that i'm using so if i now go back to here and i paste that in and i change the, the four to a six then we're good to go so i now click shorten i copy that i go back to here click done and then go to the bottom slide there we are and change that like that and then what i normally do at this point is i click here i go to qr code monkey which i've got as a as a shortcut and it's just coming up now i then paste in the link like that hit enter that makes the QR code. I click download PNG. I then wait for it to download. Like this, doesn't take long. QR code monkey is brilliant. And you can change the color of the QR code as well if you want to have a different color as opposed to black and white. Click save, there it is. I go back to my slide. I delete the original and I just literally drag it in. I normally crop it as well like that and like that. Just to make sure it fits nicely on the screen. And that, there we are. And then just drag it in the middle to make it sure it's centered. And there we are. Right, so if I put that in the chat for you, you've then got it. And that means not only have you got that one, it means if you copy the same link and just change the number. So if you put uh, Cotisol Clinic Feb 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, you get access to all the presentations. So we've done it, Michael. Brilliant. So I will stop sharing my screen. And any final thoughts? After five days of tech clinics. <laughs> no, don't tell them everything. <laughs> 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 don't tell them how to access everything no uh i think this has been uh i think this has been absolutely fabulous uh, uh these these five days here and uh I, I think there's real potential here for as i've mentioned to joe uh, in previous days uh for continuing this we just we uh, maybe we just have to figure out a better way to uh to do it to make it happen but uh so much information mm. I love it. It's, it's 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 great, Monique. I hope, you. I hope you agree. This is the first day we've seen you, so I hope that's a sum up. Absolutely, up yes. You. Uh, Danielle has been here all five days. Uh, Miori has been here all five days. I think you, you both have been here all, all five days. Uh, and I you know, the first Monday, I, I guess. You you missed Monday, Miora. That, that that's Miori. why I I meet Miori. Yeah, because he mentioned that you you did free grid on the Monday. The yeah, first day. I, I did. I don't remember, so maybe I joined. Okay. The second day. Ah, oh, Miori, only four days. Oh, jinkies! What are we going to do? No, it was. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's fine. I think this is you know, it's part of the process for us to to move online and see what we can offer people and see what the, what they benefit from. But I think this is this is a winner. I think. Uh, Thank you. And, uh, you know, th this the ability to talk to somebody with Joe's expertise in a small group. We're gonna have to think about how, how to do this a little bit better, or maybe not. Maybe it's just gonna be you know, a few lucky people are gonna be able to take advantage of this. That that's that's also okay. But uh, yes. Um, Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Monique, for showing up. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daniela. And Sorry, sorry, Miori. Sounds like Korean. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the, I'm trying to get the Japanese and it's coming out of Korean. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you very much, Miori, for coming every day. Um, hope to see you all. We've got a few more days, so uh, enjoy. Um, yeah, I, I'm really worried now because my computer is about to crash. I, I noticed that there's a kind of weird sign keep coming in and I, I think my battery is all out, empty. And oh dear. 
Um, thank you. Thank you as well, Monique, for yeah. putting about one tab, one tab Chrome extension in the chat. That's also really good. Um, there's also one called Cluster, which I use all the time. Cluster Chrome extension, which allows you to manage your tab. I know this sounds a bit rich because I've got so many tabs open, but um, but but Cluster is really good. And it also has an option to remove duplicates of the same tab. So if you have X number of tabs open, you can't actually see all the tabs that are open. It means you can then, um, in fact, let me, if, I can, if, I, if I'm able to, let me just quickly show you what it looks like. If I share my screen, this is, this is a bit embarrassing because you're going to see how many, uh, how many things I've got open right now. But anyway, right. So as you can see here, I've got 110 tabs open in my current window. But if I go through here like this, all I have to do is like here, for example, I can just click the X and it, it looks like it's still there, but it hasn't. It's actually it's actually closing the tab. So it's really, really useful for managing that. And if I click on, um, let's have a look. It's uh, this one. You click on the three dots here and you, you remove duplicates. So if I do that now, it means it will then remove all the duplicates from that um, uh, from that particular tab. So that's how that works. And it's, it's really useful. Cluster is really, really useful and of course free. Um, and it just uh, allows you to um, see exactly what you've got open. Over to you, Michael. You're you're muted again. Sorry. No, I know. I said, "Oh, free like me." Ha, ha. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, nice. Yeah, no, it's not. No, it's not nice. <laughs> uh, yes, Joe. Thank you so much for this. Thank you. So much. Uh, really, thank you. Really, really, no really, really, really a nice set of sessions. Yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna see if we can do this again in one way or the other because it's uh, it's, it's, it's so good. Um, Monique, thank you for showing up. Uh, Miori, thank, thank you for seeing you again. Daniela. Thank you very much. Uh, Joe and Michael for running it. It's done. We'll see Thank you, you again. Um, please stay around for the rest of the weekend. We've got a couple more days of stuff. We're going to get very, very busy tomorrow and uh, and Sunday. And then after that, I'm I'm sleeping. I'm done with it. <laughs> yeah, you've done an amazing job, my, Michael. I'm sure it's yeah, uh, the, the amount of work. But, but thank you, thank you so much. But not not just me. It's been uh, a lot of people have done a lot of a lot of things. So sure, thank you. But thank you, Joe, for this. We're gonna go now. Thank you, Monique. Thank you, Miori. Thank you, thank you Daniela. Joe, Off just one Bye thing. On. Uh, Joe. Yeah. Uh, can I send you the message about this problem that happened in uh, during Google Classroom thing? Like, I, I think I lost the address that you gave me because it's. Just